A few weeks ago, I started playing DRL Simulator, which is basically an FPV drone simulator. I got the game for free on Epic Games a while back, and finally decided to give it a try, since I needed some practice before flying real FPV drones. So I installed the game, grabbed my controller, skipped the tutorial, and went straight to flying in pro mode. And I crashed. A lot. This is going to be difficult. <laughs> After hours of practice, watching YouTube you videos, and you're gonna be yawing to the left. This one, and that makes the motor. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. And more crashes. I finally started to control the drone properly. Still not the best control, but I can make it go to where I want it to go. Almost all the YouTube videos and guides online recommend getting a transmitter or radio that you can use to practice in simulators before flying real FPV drones. So I got one. And boy did it make a difference. Just look at how much control I have now. Now the question is, if you're a beginner looking to get into FPV drones by playing simulators, do you need a radio? Or can you stick with a game controller and be good? Let's first take a look at the main differences between the two. The main difference lies in the gimbals or joysticks. If we take a look at the game controller, both the joysticks return to the center when you release them. Whereas on the FPV radio, one of the gimbals does not return to the center. You can freely move it up or down and it stays in that position. Although moving the stick side to side still returns it to the center. Usually, the left gimbal controls the throttle and yaw of the drone. Having the sticks utilize the full range of vertical travel allows more control over the throttle. You're also not fighting the sticks since it keeps its position. If we take a look at the game controller, you have limited vertical travel for the left stick since it centers. The center is at 0% throttle, unlike the radio which has 0% throttle at the bottom. Overall, the radio allows for more precise control because of the larger range of motion of the gimbals. The sticks of the radio also suits different types of grips, such as pinching or hybrid grip. If you're serious about getting into FPV drones and getting good at it, you should definitely get a radio to practice in simulators. So where does this leave the game controller? Well, if you use game controllers to play FPV simulators, you should just quit. Because game controllers are trash and you'll never become a good FEV pilot by using game controllers for simulators. Nah, I'm just kidding. Game controllers are actually fine, kinda. If you're just starting out and you don't have a radio yet, using game controllers for FPV sims is a good way to get your feet wet in the hobby. Especially for learning the basic controls of an FPV drone, using a game controller is fine. As you're actually able to do some smooth flying with just a game controller. Albeit, this was in a large map and I did not go through very tight gaps or gates. Here are some clips of me using the gamepad and FPV controller after 40 hours of DRL simulator. In this gamepad footage, you can see that I can definitely control the drone, but the movement is kind of abrupt and jittery. There is very little throttle control with the gamepad and this makes it extremely difficult to hit gaps. Looking at the FPV controller footage, you can see just how much smoother the flying is. The throttle control also allows me to hit gaps easier. Let's take a look at this clip of using gamepad for a race course. I don't think I can actually complete the whole course using the gamepad. You can see how much I struggle to go through the gates and how jittery the throttle is. Here's the same course, but with an FPV radio. As you can see, I'm able to control the drone much better.
It's clear that FPV radios are superior for simulators. Well, it's quite obvious since they really were designed to control FPV drones. I just wanted to show that if all you had was a gamepad, you can definitely get started with simulators. I have about 40 hours on DRL exclusively with a gamepad, and it was fine to just have some fun flying around large maps to get familiar with the FPV drone controls. However, if you have the budget and are serious about getting into FPV drones, you should definitely get an FPV radio. And you don't even have to spend much for a radio. There are some budget-friendly radios like the Radio Master Zorro and Jumper t Light. If you are going to use a gamepad, I do recommend choosing the larger maps in DRL to practice on since they are more forgiving and you don't have to be as precise with your controls to have some fun flying around. That's it for this video guys. I hope you found this video interesting and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.